Blessed be the name of the Lord. It's good to be here again in the presence of God, declaring His Word. And today, I just want to preach from the Word of God. It's Romans chapter 8, verse 1 to 2. And the Word of God declare, There is therefore no, no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Eternal, most gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. I pray that you give concise interpretation, dear God, to your word. That every recipient of your word, Lord, will rise from the, their sleep, from whence they have been slaves to, and come to know you as their personal Savior. This I declare and decree in none other name but our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Today we want to look at those folks who believe that they have done so much wrong, committed so much sin, that they are not worthy to be a part of the kingdom of of God. Now I want to say to you that first, ye of the flesh is of the flesh, and ye of the spirit is of the spirit. When Nicodemus told Jesus Christ, in other words, when Christ told Nicodemus that he must be born again, Nicodemus asks a question, should a man entered his mother's womb for the second time and be born again? And Christ answered, ye of the flesh is of the flesh, and ye of the spirit is of the spirit. Now, the flesh is a through and thorough representation of sin. It is subject to sin. It is subject to death. But the Spirit of God is the true representation of life. Now, ye that walk in the realm of the flesh is walking after death. Ye that walk in the realm of the spirit is walking after life. Now this message is clear cut. You have a choice. Are you going to walk after the flesh or after the spirit? The choice is yours. But let me first establish the consequences that aligns itself with the flesh. The flesh will perish when sin is a part of your nature. You will go through fleshly penalties when you live in a sinful nature. Now, on the contrary, when you live a spiritual life, the spiritual life is able to correct the penalties of the fleshly nature. So, let's say you have been sick and seriously ill, whether it's from a sexual transmitted disease or some other form of natural sickness. Now Christ said, if he be in you, you become a new creation in the body of Christ. But the most important thing is, he said, I have given you not a spirit of fear, 
but a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. Now, I want to say this to you. If you have an incapacitated body, where there's conflict in the body, you cannot have a sound mind. Because the body will affect the mind. But if Christ gives you a sound mind, by his own word, he has no choice but to make you a new creation. So behold, the old man would have passed away physically and spiritually speaking. Your old sinful nature would have passed away. But you know, become a new creation in the body of Christ. So God has to do something that represents power. If you're going to become a new creation, it means the old man, the old you, the old problems in you, there has to be some form of restoration in you by God. Because you can't preach the word of God in its absoluteness about something to a, a person that you are presently going through or experiencing in its fullness. So in other words, you can't preach about getting healed of a cancer when you yourself is carrying cancer. You first have to experience cancer, getting cured from cancer by God to preach another person about how they can be cured through God with their cancer. Now I'm getting home to you because I want you to understand that God is a God of restoration. He is a God that deals directly at your heart, your soul, and your spirit because something fundamentally happens when Christ gets into your spirit. Now, the death of Jesus Christ on Calvary's cross was meant for a specific purpose. And the symbolic meaning and the revelation behind that is that every single blood that came from Jesus Christ himself, from the Holy One, from the Anointed One, from the Appointed One, from the Triune God himself that hit the ground, that blood establishes immunity in the earth for all humanity. In other words, Christ is saying to you that was made of the flesh that there is a vaccine for you by him if you receive him. In other words, God is saying to you there is no sickness, there is no disease on this earth that he can't cure. In other words, Christ is the greatest physician of all times. Now, I'm getting that part to you because we must understand for the mere fact that we go through so much biological and physiological problems is because we don't know Jesus Christ in spirit. Now, for those with mental and psychiatric problems, God spoke about the renewal of your mind, the power. I'm not giving you a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Lord, help me here to preach this thing. Because the reality is, with is mental conflict in you, and you cry out to God, and God is going to transform you, something has to happen with the mind. Because if Christ be in you, you become a new creation in a body of Christ and you got a mind of conflict, then there is a fundamental problem. Because if you're going to be a new creation, the first thing God has to do is restore the mind. So you can think clearly. So you can establish intimacy in spirit and in truth with God. So God is telling you that all your earthly problems he has the answer in his hands. God is saying that you are suffering things. You are going through physical problems. You are going through spiritual problems simply because you are lacking vision. And the word of God declares, where there is no vision, people will surely perish. 
And we live in a world today. <laughs> Lord, help me to preach this. Every time you look around, you can see an urgent care center established in every community. Two and three urgent care centers. Hospitals growing and booming. Profits skyrocketing. Medicines for everything. And the more and more it's evolving and growing. Every problem, the first thing we do is call 911. The first thing we do is call up our practitioners. The first thing we do is run to the doctor and run to the, the nurse. They, they have the answers. They, they got the remedies for every problem in your life. But no one is crying out to God in their spirit. And this is the problem. And the devil is sitting there and is laughing and saying, oh, I got them. The devil, he's a master. He's a craftsman of all sicknesses, all viruses, all diseases. He's the craftsman of that. But Jesus Christ is the cure and answer to every demonic spell and curse and sin and virus and every single disease that was placed before you. Jesus Christ said, I am the king. I am the king and I can do all things. But if you can allow me, Jesus Christ, to come inside your house, I will speak through your voice to every disease and every symptom, every virus, every molecule that the devil bring before you in the name of Jesus Christ, son. You will bind that spirit in the name of Jesus. You must understand who you are in the spirit. There's no condemnation. <laughs> Oh, help me here, Lord, to those who are in Christ. You see, when, when you are possessed with the Holy Spirit, and I want to make this clear, because there are those who are demon-possessed. And what, what demon possession does, it alters your body's chemistry. It alters... Your hormones. It alters you. And, and that is why you can got a situation in life where people can born, men can born feeling like a woman. Or a woman feeling like a man. Or a, a woman or a man just messed up, don't know what there is. This, this is a problem. This is what the devil do to your mind. He bring conflict to your mind. And then we say, but I, I, I feel like a woman. I need a man. You're a man. I feel like a woman. I, I feel like a man, but oh, I still feel like a woman too. I look like a man, but feel like a woman too. There's confusion. There's condemnation. And, and it's reality. <laughs> this has been lingering on for generations to generations. People murder people and they come back to themselves and, hey, I didn't kill anyone. What are you talking about? It's reality. Demon possession destroys humanity, destroys the minds of humanity, destroys their soul, destroys their spirit. But God, he restores. He restores. And with that restoration comes power. It comes dominion. It comes authority. We weren't called to be victims of the flesh. The flesh. It has a lifespan. Your spirit don't. And while you are existing in the flesh, you must understand that you have an obligation. And that obligation is to live the life that Jesus Christ 
has set forth in the flesh for you to live. The life that the first Adam have never fulfilled. We all says we love God. We all says I do my due diligence. It is turmoil. Turmoil. You look good on the outside, but deep down in your heart, deep down in your spirit, there's turmoil, there's conflict, there's problems at home, there's problems in your workplace, there's problems that are following you and seasoning your mind, seasoning your spirit, and you are unhappy, you are fear, you are you are living a life of denial simply because you can't face the reality to know that you are in a state of destruction, but you need help from someone that is hurting than you. You need help from someone that is not of the natural realm. You need help from God. You need the spirit of God to come into your heart and revolutionize your life. You need help. You got the power not only to transform you but to transform your community your household, your workplace, your school. It doesn't matter what. God had allowed you to go through some conflicts that you will come to know him. Now, God didn't put the conflict on you. The devil did. But God wanted you to understand the penalties of the earth when there's a resistance from worshiping him in spirit and in truth. The penalties of the earth that come to steal, to kill, and to destroy the plans of the devil, the artistry and the craftsmanship of the devil is so unique that you will never see when it's coming until you fall in his arms, till you fall in his snares, to fall in his traps, to fall in his footsteps. You will never see when it's coming because his craftsmanship is well deployed and structured to destroy humanity. And until we come to know God in spirit and in truth, we will always be victims to the flesh. And we will die victims to the flesh. We recall that even in our trials, in our tribulations, even in our turmoil, when we hit rock bottom, when we hit the worst part of our life, we were called in that dimension that we will rise up from the rock bottom, from the pits of hell, and glorify God. It doesn't matter what valley of shell of death you are walking through. Jesus Christ is there with you. He been there first. But my God is saying in this time and season, for if you shall hold on upon my hand, and if you shall focus your eyes upon me, and if you shall open your heart, and let your spirit intimately come combined with mine for the word of God declare that you will be a conqueror in every given situation of your life that there no weapon by the enemy will prosper against you but you shall be a victor in every circumstance and you will see the glory of God showing up in your life this is the hour that you give close attention to who you are as a spiritual being. Who you are as a spiritual being. We were living in the flesh from time we were born. We get up, we brush our teeth. We go to sleep at night, we go to school, we go to work, we buy fancy clothes, we buy fancy houses, we buy fancy motor cars, and we take plane rides, and we visit other places, and all this time we're doing all this, there's no time we take out to spend intimate quality time with the Holy Spirit, and our spirits are starving, and our souls are hungering for 
for righteousness. Our souls are hungering for peace and mercy and compassion. Our souls are hungering to get rid of all of the bondage and turmoil and conflict. But we don't seem to understand that unless you present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable before Jesus Christ, unless you can do that, there is nothing God can do for you. But when you succumb to the Spirit of God and you start to bring your body into position and poise yourself to be a recipient of God's word and to entertain the Holy Spirit in your heart and to understand it is him who has made us and not we ourselves and until we understand that it's Christ is the person who is in dominion and power and the authority and Christ is the king of kings and lord of lords and he's the one that to be exalted and the one to be exalted and the one to be magnified and the one to be glorified and the one that we give praise and we give worship to until we understand that he is the person we give admiration and adoration to until we know how to get down on our knees and praise and worship God in our spirit from the bottoms of our heart and give God the thanks and give God the glory that we can get up and breathe there in and day out and until we can understand that it's God who's prepared for us every day with fresh air and food to eat and clothes to wear until we can thank God for what he's doing in our lives until we can worship God in spirit and in truth and not it is him who has made us and not we ourselves until we can do that we are nothing more but sounding brass and tingling cymbals that saith the Lord Jesus Christ of hosts until we come to know Christ as our personal savior and worship him in spirit and in truth and we are nothing more but sounding brass and tingling cymbals get rid of the old carnal fleshly nature and Allow Christ, the Spirit of God, to get inside of you that you can do all things that through Christ who strengthens you until we come to that point in life that we know it is God is the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. That is the place we need to come to in this time and season. Wake up, sons and daughters of God. Don't be a victim to the flesh. Oh, help me here, God. Too long we have struggled in turmoil, conflict, pain. The demons of hell is ravishing us. The demons of hell is destroying our families. The demons of hell is ripping havoc and turmoil and all kind of problems and you can't do nothing about it because you are weak there's no substance of God in your bones for the word of God declare his word of food to the belly and marrow to the bones that's life in its sense and its purest form hear me sons of daughters of, and daughters of God wake up from whence you are asleep you, it's time to rise up and understand that we have a God to give thanks and praise to don't be a victim. Don't be a victim. I am a conqueror in every given situation. Don't fall off the antics of the enemy. He come in every form. He preach behind the proofs of God, the, the pews in the church and in the pulpits. He looked right. He sounds right. But he's not right. Discern. Get a spirit of discernment. To hear from God himself. To know who God is for your own self. This is your hour of visitation. This is your hour of resurrection. Don't be a victim. Don't be a victim. God didn't call you to be at the tail of anything. He called you to be at the head. For the righteous shall judge the earth. We were called to be leaders in God's kingdom. 
We were the one that's supposed to be making policies. Sitting in high places. Doing the will of God. And we have a world that is in shambles. A world of corruption. A world of sin. And the same men and women that are supposed to represent God are victims of the same world. That shouldn't be. Eternal Almighty God, I thank you for your word today, Lord. And I pray that every recipient of your word will rise up in this 21st century. Die to self, die to the carnal nature. And allow your spirit to transform their lives, transform their hearts, transform their minds. That they will not walk after the flesh, but walk after the spirit. That, Lord, they will learn to loose and to bind, to heal and to deliver, to raise the dead, spiritually and physically, if needed to, in your name, God. That, Lord, your name will be glorified in earth as it is in heaven. And that your, that your will will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Through your appointed sons and your appointed daughters, Lord. Restore them, protect them, give them the integrity to walk in the fulfillment of your righteousness. Declaring your word in earth as it is in heaven. This I pray in none other name but our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ's name. Amen and amen.